Hey, it's Don, the auction professor. It is Sunday, so we're going to do another what sold on eBay today. We're going to go right over the screen, and I'm going to show you some items we sold in this past week. So the first item here is a Tacro drafting set, German-made, um, old-school drafting items. Nowadays, it's all CAD, computer-aided drafting and all, so it's something that's antiquated to some extent. I still have some sets that I have around here for just crafts and arts and model making and things like that that you just can't do without something like this. So uh, I have three bucks invested into it. I sold it for $25.88. It's been up for 18 months, which equates to, you know, not even $2 worth of, of listing fees. So I've had five bucks into it in the fees. I'm going to take home $17.50 for just letting this thing ride up online. So no big deal on that one. Next one here is a religious medal. Just a small, little, tiny religious medal. These I get in big bunches at church sales and things like that. Now, most of what you find, again, with any type of collectible or anything like that, isn't going to be worth a fortune. Now, this is a vintage one. You have to know the difference. This one's made out of brass that's been silver plated, so it's not a modern one. It's not just some junker. This is something that's probably close to, say, 75 to 100 years old on this piece here. I sold it for 15 plus they paid shipping, which was fine with me. Again, I've got pennies. I probably spent a dollar on like 20 of these in a little bag, which is usually what I do on these type of items. Next item here, Steve Canyon. Um, this is a comic strip section, all from the 40s. They're half pagers. I buy uh, old vintage newspapers all the time, like from attics and things along that line. And many times I can buy like half a van load full of newspapers that have been just sitting around in, in at least a decent enough condition to sell. And then we'll cut them up here. Kids will process them. They'll cut out all the ones that are worth saving. We'll combine them together and sell them out that way. This went for 20 bucks you know, plus shipping. So I really can't complain on something like this. I've got pennies and I do mean pennies, even though this sat for like a year and six months as a long tail item, I still made out like a bandit. I maybe have with listing fees, like maybe $2 and 20 cents invested into this total. So, you know, that's the kind of thing that uh, I look at. And even with that money invested into it, it's already long since been paid for because some of the items I got out of this same lot, like the Superman ones, went immediately. They sold right away for a horrendously good amount of money because there were some one-pagers in there. So I do cut up newspapers a lot for the color comic strips. Now, the back in the 40s, these were actually separate page sections. It was an insert, so they're just the same size as a regular newspaper, but it'll be like 4, 8, 12 pages of just full-color comics, and those are what I'm talking about. Next one here, I just showed this in a haul. Um, I believe it was the Father and Son Hall, which you can literally see this postcard. It could have been the one before that. I don't remember if it was the Antique Mall Hall or the um, last uh, Father Son Hall at the flea market. One of those, I just got this. I've got like 72 cents into this. It sold straight out. I took 15 on it, which I was fine with. Um, again, I put high prices on them, and then I just go from there. So 15 bucks, I was perfectly fine with that. Again, 72 cents. It just paid for the lot, um, this entire lot of postcards uh, that I got. Next one here is Piquet, Ohio. It's a Main Street postcard, 20 bucks. Decent price on that one. Sold fairly quickly. Now, this one I showed for those in my Patreon group. I've shown you some of these labels from this haul. This one sold now. You can see the price. It's been trimmed. So, you know, I'm not really worried about uh, price-wise on these trimmed ones. They're just give me bonuses for, for my purchases. I purchased a whole bunch of tobacco labels for a relatively incredibly low price. So I'm just giving away the fodders here at this point. Uh, more records. This one I took 25 on. I paid $2 for this record set. I believe there was six discs in it. It's not a huge seller, but $25 I'm fine with for a $2 investment. Wasn't up but, say, maybe um, nine months or so. So in listing fees, five times nine at the high end, it's 45 cents or 18 cents if it's my first 10,000 listings in this store. So next one, just a 1960s NASA uh, postcard, $9.38, nothing special. It's a chrome. I don't do a lot with the chromes like this, um, you know, but I do buy certain ones. And this is just a perfect example of the type I buy. Sometimes I can get these in big quantities to these chromes because most people don't mess with them. 9.38 on that one. 
Now this one I just showed as well too, so you'll have to go back one or two videos. I just showed this specific card again in one of my hauls. I just listed it. It sold the same day it went up. Um, I had a couple offers on it, um, so it went back and forth um, for just a few moments. I put it up for seventeen fifty. It's not a scarce card, so I, I paid maybe a dollar or less for it. Maybe this was one of those seventy-two cents ones as well. But either way, good sell, quick sell, fourteen fifty right off the top. Next one here is a vintage Victorian Christmas card. This one shows up occasionally. It's a Worths. Usually I'll find these in like uh, postcard collections. That's about the size of this one here, literally down to the T. And most people think this one is a postcard, but it is not. It is a standardized Christmas card, the cats in the tree. This is a well-collected one. This one went for $35 on this one here. I got a dollar into it. I bought it with a postcard lot, actually. Next one here is a 78 record. This is Arthur Fields. How are you going to keep him down on the farm? This is a classic. Uh, I, I even remember them playing it for TV commercials like in the 70s and 80s, this specific song. So, again, 25 bucks. You can see the condition of the record. It's a real nice copy. Um, e minus to E, which is uh, about unplayed. Next one here is a print ad for Mrs. Potts Sat Iron. Sat Iron stuff goes no matter what it is, even up into the 20s and 30s, postcards, print ads, whatever the case may be. This is a trimmed piece of paper from a old ripped up magazine, believe it or not. And you can see the backside is just some other um, ad on the back. And this is literally what you see. Normally, I don't post the picture on the other side of it. This one had a date and it was a decent, interesting one. So the date would be uh, incredibly valuable to the person buying this one. So I left it in the image and I figured it would sell. I took 45 on this one right here. So this is just a perfect example that print ads can sell very well. That last one, the Saturn one too, was only up for maybe three days at the most. Now here is a poster stamp. Um, it's kind of like a luggage label almost, but this would have been pasted on an envelope so you can uh, show where you're at. It's It literally would be a poster stamp more than anything else. It did sell for 1088 on this one. Next one here is a mini samurai sword letter opener. Uh, it's a souvenir from Indian River, Michigan, which is a area, tourist area, it used to be back in the 40s and 50s. It's a rather interesting item. You can see the souvenir sticker. There is the actual blade. This thing is sharp as can be. You wouldn't want to mess up on this one here because you would definitely cut yourself. The blades even marked Japan, too. Uh, I did sell it for $20.62. Charlie's Angels. This one sold for $14.50. Now, this one's been up for a little while. I paid a dollar for it. Uh, it's been up for maybe almost two years, which would be about $1.20 in listing fees. So with fees... And the actual cost of the item, I'm still going to make about 10 bucks on this item. That's why when people say it doesn't sell right away, they just chunk it out. I don't worry about it. It adds to my inventory, and I still sell this item. It just takes the right person coming in the store at the right time. Now, with Farrah Fawcett passing, you know, I might have even been able to have marked this up. I don't think I even touched it since that. Um, I don't go back and touch every item, and this is just a perfect example of that. Next item here, Hawaiian Airlines luggage label. Um, this was just to go to a specific location once it landed. So um, this is typically what I see on these kind of labels. 1940s, 1950s, 1388 is the sale price on that one. Next one here is a postcard. Now, this person bought a couple, and they were all Valentine-related postcards. This one sold straight out at $27.50. If I'm not mistaken, this one is in a haul video from... A few months ago, um, I don't list everything right away. I've talked about it many times. I have a 90-day plan, and sometimes items I buy today may not be listed till even at the end of this year for fourth quarter. That's just the way I do it. I don't have a concern on setting thousands of items aside to list them at a later point. You know, I've got tons of ability to list them right away, but again, certain items sell better at certain times of the year. I just talked about getting up Valentines and things like that. We flooded our Valentines material up, everything we had at one point a month or two ago. So, you know, it all helps in the play of this, and this just sold. So, and this person, as I said, bought a couple Valentines at the same time. So it was a quick 50 bucks just out of a few cards. Next item here is a beer advertising sheet music. It's also from a specific oyster house. Um, I believe the person who bought this was actually a relative of this. Um, they didn't go into detail, and I, I don't pry on that. But it did sell for 75 bucks. It is ripped. They were very happy with it. You can see the rip at the seam. It's all complete. It's there. Here's the advertisement on the back. 
It was given out by this oyster house, which isn't something you see very often. But in New York City, things are a little different sometimes. So perfect example. It's dated 1884. It's a large format advertising piece, which you just don't see very often. So 75 bucks. I was fine. I took the offer. Next one here. Now, this is like a standee, like almost like a paper toy. It's early. Um, you you got to know what these are and the age on some of these to be able to tell. Anthropomorphic figures sell very well. It's a frog. This one went for $45. Um, I, I actually have a couple more of these, believe it or not. I buy in big, huge bulk sometimes, and sometimes I'm lucky enough to get collections and large collections of stuff and it brings the cost down buying in bulk is always best buying wholesale items are always even better but obviously this is just a vintage collectible next item here is a tape measure now i showed this in a haul for sure it still worked i paid a quarter for it if i'm not mistaken this may have even been a thrift store haul uh, maybe i can't remember it's been a little while this one was listed about 30 or 40 days ago if i'm not mistaken uh, again, I sold it for $12.50, which was perfectly fine. Average price on these is like 8 or 10 bucks. So I sold it on the high end, as I usually do for these type of items. Somebody runs into something, it's not a big ordeal. It's only 10 12 bucks. They're just going to buy it. They're not going to sit there and try and source a cheaper item for a dollar or two on a collectible, because by the time they look, this one could be gone in, in their eyes, because they're buying it now. So I see that, and that's the philosophy that always works for us. That's why I do charge more for many items that, that people sell for a lot less. Uh, Tioga Road. Um, this one I took 20 bucks on this one here. I take offers. I price them high again. It has a crease through it. You can see it. Um, you know, it, it's just a vintage postcard. I paid 50 cents or a dollar for this. So for 20 bucks on my return, I'm very happy with that. This one wasn't up, but maybe two months, 60 days, five cents or two cents, depending on where it falls in my listings. This, I think, is the last one of these belts that I had. I had a whole bunch of these. I bought NOS stock. I bought it wholesale. I, I had a ton of these, and I do mean a ton of these. I originally had thought about putting them up on Amazon um, because they were new. I had some tags for some of them, but I decided just I'll just yank them all and put them all this way here on eBay. They are new. They are NOS product. I just didn't want to send or, or deal with something unsealed going to Amazon or anything like that. So anyway, it's an otter item, too. Fourteen fifty. It sold for. Next one here, another seventy-eight. Now this is over the top. This is a military one from World War II, uh, riding up over the top of, um, you know, like on a charge over your trenches in the trench warfare area. So, typical one, twenty-five bucks. This one sold for. Again, conditions excellent on this one as well too. Now this one, I had nine of these in this last grouping. I buy usually in summer. I pick up maybe twenty or thirty of these around here. And then I'll list them all in one big lot or a couple. I had several different varieties. So I had two or three of these listings going at the same time for the different types of spark plugs. These are miniature, tiny little charms that they made. People turned them into earrings and all kinds of things. Champion Spark Plug was founded here in, in this general area. The founder actually donated his old mansion. It's actually a city park now. It was somebody my father actually knew as well, too. So he went to school with a gentleman who actually founded Champion Spark Plugs. I took 10 on this, plus they paid the 375 I think it was, on shipping on this as well, too. Next one here, another postcard, 1450 This one sold straight out at that price. No offer was needed. It's a real picture postcard, the SSS Alaska. Interesting postcard either way. Next one, another cigar label. Uh, this one, I think I took 25 on this one here. It had some issues, so, you know, I'm happy with the price on it. Again, this is one I think the Patreon saw. Uh, but anyway, good good return on the investment. I sold a ton out of my, my last big lot of tobacco labels. And the last one here, I took 10 bucks on this one here, plus they paid the, the shipping on it. It's just a tiny poster stamp label of some sorts that's advertising glasses. And it's a really interesting image. It's got an octagonal lensed pair of clip-on nose style glasses on the face which is pretty interesting well there you go there's some more items we sold hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified when i post new content or go live subscribe and tell a friend